Support for KQED comes from BridgeBank, offering flexible financial solutions to entrepreneurs and to the technology and life sciences communities. BridgeBank is a division of Western Alliance Bank, member FDIC. BridgeBank, be bold, venture wisely. From KQED. This is the California Report. Good morning. I'm Saul Gonzalez in Los Angeles. In response to the massive oil spill off the coast of Orange County, Governor Gavin Newsom has issued a state of emergency. This should allow state agencies to more effectively marshal their resources in the ongoing response to the spill. The Huntington Beach City Council also approved its own state of emergency last night, and the Orange County Board of Supervisors could do the same at its meeting later this morning. As crews work to contain oil from spreading to beaches and wetland preserves, questions are being raised about the response time and investigation into what caused the spill. Amplify Energy, the company that operates the pipeline that ruptured, has divers inspecting the now patched pipe. The company's CEO says it's focusing on one particular section of the more than 8,000 feet of pipeline that's been examined. Meanwhile, speaking at a news conference yesterday, Orange County Supervisor Katrina Foley said she wants answers about when the spill was first reported. I actually do think that one of the pieces of the investigation needs to be the timing of when there was a report to the company about a potential spill. My office has been informed that that occurred Friday night. Nothing to do with smell, by the way, but having to do with uh, mariners and others reporting that they saw a, a sheen. The Coast Guard is also investigating whether a ship's anchor may have caused the damage that released 126,000 gallons of crude into the Pacific Ocean. And according to the Los Angeles Times, the agency is also looking into possible negligence by Amplify Energy, with company personnel not noticing a drop in pressure in the pipeline that could have allowed crude to flow into the water for hours. Meanwhile, the state Senate Committee on Natural Resources also plans to investigate the spill. Committee Chair State Senator Henry Stern says the lawmakers plan to look into the cause of the spill and who's liable for it and how to make sure it never happens again. As for the spread of the spill, U.S. Coast Guard Captain Rebecca Orr says they're closely monitoring its movement. What we are doing uh, is, is flying daily over flights, uh, three or four flights a day, where we are mapping the oil and mapping its direction Uh, looking at models of weather, so tides and currents and wind, uh, so that we can determine the direction. It really is dependent on the prevailing weather conditions, but uh, the oil continues to move in a southerly direction. Many Orange County beaches could be closed for weeks or even months if the oil continues to spread. Meanwhile, people who live in the area are reflecting on the spill and the oil industry's presence in Orange County waters. As she walked a largely deserted Bolsa Chica State Beach yesterday morning, passing cleanup crews dressed in biohazard suits, I met Kim Nguyen Lam. So what do you think about this? What's happened here? I think there needs to be better ways to protect our environment. We walk the beach about six days a week. And on weekends, there's children playing, there's families gathering. But often we saw all these black marks on the beach. And thinking you, you've seen the, si- signs yes, of petroleum yes, production before, uh-huh. small signs, yeah. yeah. Some days we had to stay up there because it was so dirty down here. But I, I kept thinking, that aren't there regulations to protect this and all the birds and wildlife are there? I don't know because it's, uh, it keeps happening. That's Huntington Beach resident Kim Nguyen Lam. On a coastal biking path, I met Dan, who didn't want his last name used for privacy concerns. He had strong opinions about the presence of oil platforms off the coast of Huntington Beach. We're thinking that maybe it's time those things move out of this area. And when you say those things, you're referencing the oil rigs right in front of us out in the water. Yeah, it's time for them to move and these beaches are too nice to get to have this happen anymore. Plus, we have the marshlands, Bolsa Chica and the Talbert Marsh with all the birds and all that pristine area. They don't think they go together anymore. It's time for them to probably move. I grew up in Southern California in San Diego. I've been through here a lot. I'm kind of used to seeing the, the, the platforms. But I guess for a lot of first time visitors, it's strange, right? You got Huntington Beach, Surf City, you know, fun in the sun lifestyle. And then you got all this infrastructure just off the coast. 
Yeah, well, I mean, when Huntington was first uh, booming in the early uh, 1900s, they had oil rigs all up the beaches, and they're they're still pumping oil right across from where we're talking. So uh, the oil's there, and it's all about money, and so, you know, there goes that. And uh, so, you know, it's what man does. You know, they're good at preserving, but they're also good at destroying, and this stuff here probably it's time for it to leave the area and go somewhere else but you know big dollar always talks and and leads the way in life so we'll let's see, see what happens again that was huntington beach resident dan who didn't want his last name used the oil spill is also threatening to destroy ecologically sensitive marsh areas kpcc science reporter jacob margolis has more Wetlands in Huntington Beach, which have been carefully restored and maintained since the 1990s, are now inundated with oil, and they're critical for coastal life. Over the next week, scientists will get an idea of just how badly damaged the ecosystem is. But the true test is time. Ten years as a good restoration time frame for wetlands is completely reasonable. Christine Whitcraft is a wetland ecologist at Cal State Long Beach. Everything from bacteria to the plants that grow there to the fish that spawn could have their life cycles disrupted. That was KPCC science reporter Jacob Margolis. So far, only four oil birds have been collected from this weekend's massive oil spill. Michael Zaccardi, director of the Oiled Wildlife Care Network at UC Davis, says while that's reason for hope, the numbers could go up dramatically in the days and weeks ahead. We do have active overflights from a specialized plane covering this area daily to look at animals, the locations, the concentrations they might be in, which will help us more target those areas. But at this point, we're cautiously optimistic related to the number of animals that might be affected at this point. One of the birds found, a brown pelican, had to be euthanized as it was already suffering from chronic injuries. Zaccardi says there are additional concerns in the coming days. Because birds do have low body temperatures if they're oiled, the colder the environment is, the more likely they'll come ashore and be cold. We're lucky right now because the weather's been fairly good. Zaccardi says it's important that the public not try to rescue birds themselves, as that could do more harm than good for the animals. Let's turn to health and wellness issues. Governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill yesterday that aims to address racial health disparities for new moms of color and their babies. KQED health correspondent April Domboski explains what the so-called Momdibus Act will do. In California, Black and Native American babies die at a rate more than double the state average. Black moms die at more than three times the state average. State Assembly member Dr. Akila Weber co-authored the Momnibus Act. So this bill affirms that here in California, these kind of disparities in our maternal and infant outcomes will no longer be tolerated. The new law will expand doula services, cash assistance for new moms, and Medi-Cal coverage. Before, low-income women got kicked off Medi-Cal two months after giving birth. Now, they'll be covered for a full year postpartum. For the California Report, I'm April Domboski. And vapors get ready to pay more. Governor Newsom has approved a 12.5% excise tax on the sale of e-cigarettes. It's a reaction to growing concerns about the health risks of vaping. A higher tax on vaping products will bring it in line with taxes on tobacco products. It's also hoped it will reduce vaping by minors, although they aren't legally allowed to buy e-cigarettes. The new tax comes a year after California banned the sale of flavored tobacco products, which were seen as targeting young Younger people. And an update on a story we told you about yesterday. Members of IATSE, the union that represents tens of thousands of skilled workers in film and television, have voted overwhelmingly to authorize a strike. That as labor negotiations continue with the association representing producers and the studios. Over 98% of workers from 36 union locals voted for a strike authorization. IATSE says it wants better hours, enhanced rest periods, and improved labor conditions for film and television workers, as well as higher contributions to pension plans. If a strike does happen, it would freeze up film and television productions. And finally this morning, in response to an investigation by California public radio stations into the health risks from wildfire smoke, state and federal lawmakers plan to introduce legislation and hold at least one hearing. Cap Radio's Scott Rod reports. 
Democratic Assemblywoman Luz Rivas says wildfire smoke is a big concern for residents in her Los Angeles County district. A lot of my constituents are worried about their children and long-term health effects. As chair of the Assembly Natural Resources Committee, she hopes to introduce legislation to bolster protections for students. Fellow Assemblymember Robert Rivas says he wants to expand enforcement of a recently signed law that guarantees agricultural workers access to N95 masks. This is something that is going to require that we monitor closely. We're doing all we can to protect the health and safety of such a vulnerable population of workers. And our investigation got the attention of Congress. Representative Mike Levin is a California Democrat and a member of the House's Select Committee on the Climate Crisis. Clearly and overwhelmingly, this problem is getting worse. It's going to become worse still if we don't act immediately. Meanwhile, Representative Ro Khanna, a San Jose Democrat who chairs the House's Oversight Committee on Environment, says he plans to hold a hearing on the impacts of wildfires and widespread smoke. In a statement, Khanna said Congress has no option but to act. For the California Report, I'm Scott Rod in Sacramento. Support for the California Report comes from Stanford Medicine, protecting your health and providing dependable care with safe in-person appointments and video visits. StanfordHealthCare.org slash adapting care. Water heaters only, specializing in the repair and replacement of water heaters since 1968. Licensed and insured, open 24 hours a day, every day. Learn more at waterheatersonly.com. And Eric and Wendy Schmidt, whose philanthropy harnesses the power of people and science to create innovative solutions for a healthy environment, just societies, and opportunities for human achievement. And that is the California Report for Tuesday, October 5th. We're a production of KQED Public Radio. I'm Saul Gonzalez. Thanks so much for listening, and have a great day.